All right, Jen, so a lot of us, including me, have a problem with analysis paralysis. We love to study. We like to look at things. We like to watch videos on them. We like to read up on them. But when it comes to taking action, many times we just fail there. We just don't do what needs to get done. So in today's video, Tanner Guzzi is coming in. He rocked the stage at Menfluential and he's going to teach you how to take all that information and how to take massive action on it. How many of you guys have done this? So put up a motivational quote on your phone. You're like, I'm going to get after it. This is going to help me stay motivated. I'm going to be ready to do stuff. This is good. It's really good to be able to intentionally manipulate your emotions so that you do more and you try to become more and try to become better. But the problem with motivation is it doesn't last. It can't last. Eventually that dopamine drip is going to start to taper off. Eventually that emotional high that you're feeling is going to start to go away. And one of the things that's so interesting about human beings is our adaptability. And so you're going to come out of this feeling really elevated. And within a matter of a few days, and if not a few weeks, that level of elevation is either going to taper off or it's going to be your new norm. You're not going to feel motivated anymore. This is just going to be your new normal. And so it's not going to be able to push you to continue to be better and better. You may level up by one or two degrees, but if all you rely on is motivation, rely on this emotional hit, rely on your emotions to drive your actions, then it's not going to do you any good. What you need to do is understand that discipline comes into play. I don't like eating this stuff. My wife's a really good cook and she makes it so it's pretty dang good. But for the most part, I'd rather eat pizza and ice cream. But it takes discipline to be able to do things that are good for you when you don't feel like doing it. I'll tell you guys that when you're making your 60th YouTube video and you have 1500 subscribers and everybody tells you in the comment section how much of an idiot you are, you're not going to be riding on motivation to make your next video. You're not. The guys who depend on motivation to make that next video, they drop off. It's only the guys who have the discipline, who are willing to figure out and forget what their emotional drives are and tap into something better and something deeper that still continue to make that next video, to respond to those comments positively, to write that next blog post, to send out that, new, that next newsletter, to request that proposal from that next client to try and close that next sale. If you rely on motivation solely, game over. You might as well quit now. You've just wasted everything you've learned at this conference. Do not only tap into your motivation. Use it when you can. You'll hear plenty of guys that say discipline is the only thing that matters. And don't waste motivation. It's a wonderful thing. But don't rely solely on it because it will fail you. Okay, so let's talk about this idea of inertia versus intentionality. Especially because so much of what we do in our lives is dependent on inertia. You guys come and you wear suits because you think that you're supposed to wear suits to an event like this. We go to school and we take the classes that we're supposed to study because we're, follow, we're following the cultural inertia of this is what we're supposed to do. Our political persuasions, our religious beliefs, our social circles, the music we listen to, the clothing we wear in relationship to the hobbies that we engage in, anything that we can think of, most of the time, you're not thinking. You're just emotionally responding to the inertia of the culture that you've chosen to, chosen to immerse yourself in. That's not a bad thing when you are in charge of that. You guys will always be victim, not victim, but you will always be subject to habits. You can't escape the idea of having habits, but you want to choose and create what your habits are rather than letting your habits that were driven by the inertia of people around you or by the inertia of your own decisions made out of cowardice or laziness or in a, a, a pursuit of comfort or any of those other things. You don't want those habits to shape you. You want to intentionally choose what your habits should be and allow them to shape what you are. So there's two ways that I want you guys to really focus on intentionality. The first one is you need to make intentional decisions, okay? Whatever it is that you're going to do with your life, whatever it is that you're going to do as far as a career, whatever it is that you're trying to get out of relationships, whatever it is that you're trying to do with your appearance, with your physique, with any of the things that you've learned about, you need to make intentional decisions about what those are. Now, don't think that that means that I'm saying that you have to plan everything all the way out to the end because it doesn't. It's very easy for us to allow ourselves to get paralyzed in this stage where it's not perfectly planned out. I can't quite make a decision, so I'm going to wait. I got to get a little bit more data. I got to get more ready, and then I'm going to execute. 
But I'm also not saying that you're shooting from the hip all the time either. Be intentional in what your decisions are. Don't be emotional in what your decisions are. But at the same time, you can't just be intentional in your decisions. You also need to be intentional in what your actions are. Okay, one of them, I love the gym as a metaphor because you can learn, Reynolds is gonna, you guys will get this, you learn everything about life in the gym. You really can. And one of the things that's so cool about going to the gym is this metaphor of how you have to be not only intentional in what you're choosing to do, but intentional in what your actions are. Because if you go to the gym and you're doing squats and you go in and you're just kind of half weighing it and you're like, well, I'm not feeling great. I'm gonna go a little bit light today. I'm only gonna do four reps instead of five and I'm gonna skip that extra set. And you do that every day you go into the gym, you're not gonna put on more weight, you're not gonna get stronger, your physique's not gonna get better. And then the weak people of the world are gonna sit here and they're gonna get it online forums or they're gonna talk to their friends and they're gonna say, well, the gym doesn't work. I went to the gym, I did it like day in, day out for a year and I didn't change. It's like, well, you weren't intentional in what you were actually doing when you were there. You went through and you put in the motions. You'll see the same thing that happens when you're trying to build a business. You'll say, see the same thing that happens when you're trying to improve your relationships. You'll see the same thing that happens when you're trying to be a better parent. There are people in the world who will be very intentional in what their decisions are, and then they think that somehow that's the only thing that they need to do, that they've arrived. And as long as they put in the motions, then they can justify to themselves that they made good decisions and therefore they're a victim when things don't work out the way that they hoped they would or the way that they intended them to. If the only thing you're intentional about is what you choose to do, you've wasted those decisions. You need to be intentional every single time you go in and you actively pursue the doing of it. Otherwise, it's all wasted. Now, what I don't want you guys to think this means when we're talking about rebellion and rules and other things or related to intentionality is that it means that everything that you have to decide means that you have to be unique or that you have to be special. I told you guys on the style panel earlier that when I was in junior high and high school, I very much associated with the BMX crowd, the punk rock tribe and everything else like that. And I remember very specifically thinking that I wanted to dress in a way that was unique. And it's unique like everybody else in that whole tribe is unique. If you have bright green Liberty spikes and a chain wallet and safety pins on your backpack and everybody else within your circle of friends dresses the same way, you're not really that unique. You're not really a rebel. You're just jumping from one inertia culture or one current of, of inertia to the next one. There's not any more intentionality in that. There's not any more decision making or freedom or individuality in that than there is if you were to stay in whatever your previous culture was. At the same time, it's also very easy when you get to a certain stage in your life, whether you're doing this with your own moral convictions or your own ideas about business or anything else, to come in and think that you need to abandon everything that you used to be. I will tell you guys right now that a lot of you guys probably should not be influencers. You probably shouldn't be doing YouTube channels. You probably shouldn't be trying to build an Instagram following because you will be happier and more fulfilled and bring more to the world and be the better version of yourself as an employee or as somebody who's pursuing a more traditional path or is doing something else. So don't think that just because you're here, you've now been immersed in this culture, in our current and in our inertia, that that means in order for you to be happy, you need to rebel against everything that you once were and assimilate to us. You don't. You don't. If you can and you want to because you want to, then do that. But if you don't want to, if it will not make you happy, don't abandon who you used to be. Don't abandon what you know and what you're good at. Not everybody needs to be an entrepreneur. Not everybody needs to be an influencer. Not everybody needs to make a statement. And don't think that just by choosing to do that, that you're guaranteed happiness. You won't be. Be intentional about whether or not you're going to follow the rules or you're going to rebel. Because either one of those made as a decision out of inertia is going to lead to more frustration and more misery than making that decision on your own. Now at the same time, if you are going to be someone who tries to forge your own path, you try to jump into this culture and jump into the world, first of all, I welcome you and I hope you're doing it and I hope you see a lot of success at it. But once again, once you get here, 
You need to be able to make decisions and adapt according to what works best for you and be intentional about how you're going about these things. And the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is this idea that information is not transformation, okay? You've been here for two days. You've absorbed a ton of information. You're going to feel great about it. You've already got that dopamine hit. You've taken your notes. You're understanding a lot of these things. And you're going to go home. And if that's all that happens, that's it. It's wasted. Okay? You've had epiphanies over these last two days. And just like Mark Twain said, the man who doesn't read good books has no advantage over the man who cannot read good books. I will tell you that if you men waste the epiphanies that you've had while you've been here, you don't act on them. You don't internalize them. You don't allow them to fundamentally change who you are then you have no advantage over the men who didn't come here, did not invest their time or their money, and did not have those epiphanies. Unto themselves, those epiphanies are useless. Not only are they useless, I would argue they condemn you. If you don't act on your higher knowledge, you feel worse about yourself. You start to recognize that you don't follow through. You're not tenacious. You're not doing what you're expecting yourself to do. You are a loser. You're giving up. You're doing anything else. So if you've had epiphanies here, don't just stall at information. Turn it into a transformation. And the only way to do that is to act. The reason I chose this drowning man here is because if you read every single book about swimming, all right, you read every single book, you go to the best school in the world, you get your master's degree and a PhD, they have you on panels on CNN and everywhere else to talk about swimming theory and everything else, but you never actually get in the water, you do not know how to swim. Doesn't matter. All that knowledge is useless. You have no idea how to swim. An 18 month old child who knows how to get his head up out of the water knows way more than you do about swimming. That child has been transformed. That's transformation. If you don't act on it, all you have is information. So I challenge you guys. You've been given a ton of information. You have a huge dopamine hit with what you've done. Be intentional about what you choose to do with it and then act on it. Execute on it, try it, screw it up, try it again, adapt, pivot, change. But do not get in this little circle of thinking that you're feeling good and you're making progress because you're writing information down, you get a hit because you get an epiphany, and then you chase the next one. Because if all you're doing is chasing those feelings, chasing those chemicals, chasing those emotions, you'll be back here again next year giving these guys your hard-earned money and you won't have become anything better than what you currently are and you will have wasted everything that you learned over the last two days. Thanks, guys. All right, gentlemen, you ready to take some massive action? Well, I'm linking to Tanner down in the description of this video. I'm linking over to his book, amazing book. If you want to read and understand men's style, really one of the best thought leaders out there, his website. It's a great resource, so go check it out, guys. I'm linking to both of those down in the description, and I want to hear from you guys. What, what action are you going to take after this video to go out there and live the life that, that you want? Become the man you know yourself to be.